A warm welcome to the final episode of Inside Melbourne for 2018. A great setting. We're overlooking the MCG after what has been a really successful and exciting year in so many respects for the mighty Melbourne Football Club. Our podcast, as always, uh, brought to you by our great friends and partners at Zurich. Our special guest, none other than the president, Glenn Bartlett. G'day, Glenn. G'day, Clint. No, it's great to be here and, uh, yeah, thanks very much. Great setting, the, you know, famous MCG. Of course, we've been here for 160 years. A, a fantastic home. And it was uh, the highlights of the year were built at this ground in many respects. I mean, let's just track back to September, mm. that elimination final, the semi-final. It must have given you just a great amount of pride to sit there, not just as a Melbourne person, a Melbourne supporter, but as the president of this footy club. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, just to see the joy um, that it gave. I mean, not just obviously our players and coaches involved, um, but to our fans and our members, um, to see the MCC full and the red and blue, you know, colours and the passion and the emotion was just something I'll never forget. And I think once you've tasted that, yeah, you wanted more of it. And obviously the next week again against Hawthorne was a, to play in front of two back-to-back 90,000 crowds and win those two finals. Just fantastic for our supporters and, and great experience for our young group. Did you dish out a few high fives in the stands on those t- consecutive Friday nights? Oh, or are you, how do you watch the footy? Are you a more sort of reserve type or, or are you allowed to sort of get up there and high five? I'm very unsociable. Pretty much I'm pretty, very focused on what's going on. And, and you have to be. Um, my fiance Victoria, tends to deal with any comments that might be made or whether they're good or bad. Um, but, you know, certainly, uh, you know, I can never forget, you know, when Mitch Hannon ran down the was great, wasn't goal it? and I think I was definitely out of my seat and, and high-fiving. But, um, and when Jonesy, you know, kicked that goal last quarter, um, Jake Melksham against Hawthorne, I mean, those are such memorable moments. And still it was me, emotional, yeah. It still gives me goosebumps. Yeah. They were, they were great moments, weren't they? Yeah, they were great moments and... You know, to, again, to have that experience and perform like that on the big stage and I think to see the growth of the group, Mm. um, the way Goody and the coaches managed the group over the whole week, the the whole year basically, um, you know, it was just fantastic to see the enjoyment it gave to everyone involved and the reward, to get some reward for for the effort through the year and, you know, for a number of years now we've been building. As a supporter, what I feel and what I see is a, an immense amount of sort of love and, and respect within the footy club now. Do you feel that as well among the players, staff? It's a real together sort of atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's something I think, you know, I don't obviously keep looking backwards, but um, respect was really important for the mm. club and the players and everyone to get respect on and off the field. And to be one club, you know, number of teams, but really one club mm. all behind everyone. I think that and the relationships that have been built over some time and, and the development, you know, across so, there's so many stories, you know, and, and you guys have been fantastic in bringing those stories out. But the biggest thing, I think, is just the relationships and, and you know, the behaviours and the way our guys are just professional right across the club. You know, really, really proud of that. And to see everyone enjoying it together, but then focused, on the next week, you know, that mindset was um, was just fantastic. It's been really proud to see that. So as a proud president, how do you reflect on the season that was? I mean, th- there were a few lows, but there were immense highs as well. Um, there's plenty to look forward to in 2019. Yeah. Oh, look, where can, you, where can you start? Because we were, um, you know, challenged every step of the way. Um, over pre-season. Um, Challenged and questioned. And questioned. By some. Yeah, yeah, right. Even a couple of weeks out from the finals. Um, I think when you're inside the club, you know, and, and there's so much work that's gone in over such a period of time. Um, I know I on the board always had so much faith and confidence in our coaching group, our playing mm-hmm. group, and the competitive brand of footy they're playing. I'm really proud about the way they go about it, that I always felt that, well, here's another challenge, even mm-hmm. when we're being questioned. You know, this group will really respond and, and, and they did. Um, but on and off the field, you know, I think there's some really great big decisions being made off the field this year. Um, a lot of progress off the field. Um, our supporters and fans, we want to really see the results on the field. And But we were challenged round one, obviously, you know, with you know Geelong and then a number of times through the year, the game down at Geelong, you know, It was good to get them back first oh, week of finals though, wasn't it? Yeah, oh. and, uh, but, but I also think... Um, 
you know, I know it's been said and Goody has spoken at length about this, um, which I really respect, the, the learnings along yes. the way and for a young group were just pure gold. Mm. And then to come out first final and play that way. Mm. Um, and same the next week against Hawthorne. You know, I've, I've been the most relaxed um, most of the year this year watching the team because of the way they're going about mm. it. And, and, you know, every game we've basically been in it or leading. Which is, which is quite unbelievable given... I mean, many people question the inexperience of this side, but mm. for those young guys to show such maturity on the big stage, you've got 90,000 fans <coughs> here back to back. I'm not just talking about finals, but in the lead up to the finals, that maturity was on show. Yeah. Look, I, I don't know where to start with the highlights because after that Geelong game, a lot of you know, losing after the siren, a lot of teams over the years um, in any club, you know, might have really faltered mm. and lost their confidence. You know, our boys went to Adelaide the next week and the way they played and responded in Adelaide mm. um, was, was fantastic. And then obviously to, after the Sydney game here to, to go to Perth, New Arena, 55,000, you know, screaming West Coast fans um, to get the job done there and, and break the finals drought was something I won't forget. Um, and then you go to play the Giants who are red hot here in the last game, the way they performed. Um, but the, it's been built around real um, behaviours, values, real character amongst the group, you know, across the whole club. Mm. So it's on really solid foundations, which is exciting for our fans. So um, you really took an active role in this footy club some uh, five years ago now. Um, your tenure has been five years so far. Just track back to then and, and, and perhaps just explain the journey that you've been on and, and just how satisfying mm. it has been to see some of the fruit, to, to bear some of the fruit yeah. for, for the labour. Yeah. So, look, I, I think the first thing, the thing I'm most proud of is that um, we've built um, a club and brought in or developed leaders across all facets of the club whether it's a board level, exec group, staff, playing group, coaching group, really quality people. Um, I know it's, um, you know, we really started working on the, you know, culture, what do we stand for, what are our non-negotiable behaviours, but it was real. It started five years ago. And working in that space professionally, I know it takes three to five years to rectify or change mm. those kind of behaviours. Um, but right across the... Um, club to, to now, we weren't respected mm. on or off the field at the time. Um, and I, it's documented, I said at the time, I felt we were soft on and off the field. We needed a bit mongrel, harder edge. What I meant about mongrel was a harder edge on and off the field and mm. our decisions, the way we went about it. To sort of stop and pause, you don't really think about it, but to see the brand of footy, you know, and um, the character of our players and, you know, full credit to our coaches and our list management group and Josh Marnie and Todd Viney, Jason Taylor, the whole team there, Tim Lamb. But the, to see the, now the hardness they go about at the level of professionalism, um, I know in the AFL industry, even this trade period, we're respected in the way we do business. Um, so really proud of that, that we, you know, we've really got respect back uh, on and off the field. Um, I think the frightening thing, if I think we should have been frightened at the time, we just lost $3 million, didn't have a front, our front and back of the jumper sponsors had mm. jumped off. You know, there was a lot, our yeah, list management needed a lot of work. Um, did that, development did of people. that moment, if I can just interrupt quickly, did that test you personally? Did you? Yeah, it's been a personal, yeah. it's been. Because um, it is, per, footy's a personal it, thing. It's emotional, personal. Um, and, and, and the interesting thing at the time was, you know, obviously, um, you know, having Peter Jackson on mm. board, but then having to, he come on board for six months, mm. then been able to get Peter to extend and really invest in the club, mm. you know, in that first month, then to be able to appoint Paul Ruse at the time, you know, were big decisions. And the thing I really respect is everyone knew, and particularly mm. those two guys, that when the good times came, they probably weren't going to be. Mm. But in getting the foundations, the initial thing, to be honest, was to stop the bleeding on and off the field financially and and um, in terms of on the school board, and then to get some real strong platforms around people, the Melbourne person, which we've heard about, you know, list management, behaviours right across the club, and slowly get respect back on and off the field. So, um, yeah, it's been a real journey. Um, people also forget our board have worked incredibly hard on many things, mm -hmm. and they're volunteers. Um, and sometimes I have had to be reminded about that 
because I've driven you know, board members and been pretty hard on certain things and been referred to as the stickler <laughs> on some stuff. Um, and it's, you know, like, like that, but that's, that's our role. Um, and, you know, most important thing we, we obviously do is, um, apart from overseas strategy and, and a range of things, is appoint the CEO and the senior coach and I couldn't be happier um, over the journey and, you know, with Purdy starting and obviously with Goody and the job, you know, really, really important roles and processes that our board took really seriously. I'll split it into two parts. We'll get yep. to the off-field shortly. I want to stay on the field if I yep. can and just cover yep. off on that. Um, you want to ask about my playing career? Well, <laughs> have, we, have we got enough time? I mean, oh, It shouldn't take long. <laughs> I would have loved to have played on Purdy, um, but I think as he pointed out, he didn't play seconds yeah. in, the, in the waffle, so um, that wasn't possible. Is, anyway. <laughs> is it, by the way, uh, could, is the president allowed to have a favourite player? Um, yeah, I can if if, if okay. I want if I want to. It's not generally recommended. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't know, like probably I've got four sons. Or do I have a favourite? No, I love all the, you love all of your boys. But um, who who brings you immense joy? Well, it's interesting. In, in, uh, I've been described as with my playing career, a failed backman that went then went back and played full forward and became a leading goal kicker in the waffle, full forward, um, and. Uh, not that I'm going to like him exactly to me, but I, I, I love the way Tom McDonald's gone yeah. about the transition. I love Oscar too. I want to emphasise that. Mm. Um, I love the energy that Petrarca brings, you know, to the club, and he's made me laugh a few times. Um, he's a funny man, isn't he? A funny ha, man. Has he given you a kiss? No, he hasn't. But um, I got invited to the grand final week. Um, Toscolano, oh, grand yes, final yeah, lunch. yeah. yeah. And he was a guest speaker, and there was about 400 people in the room, and he spotted me and he came charging across and said, what, what are you doing here? I didn't know you were Italian. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I said, yeah, my name was, with a straight face, I said, my name was Bartolotto. I changed it by default. He didn't believe you, did he? He said, he goes, really? I go, no, you idiot. I'm a, I'm a guest. And so I'm here with El, I can see him Elro. believing that, yeah, yeah, the yeah, track. Yeah. But so, it, was, you know, it brought a smile to my face. He that's very good. Like, but you go, you go through. I love the way Jack Viney mm. goes about it. You know, Clary, such a competitor, comes out charging out the middle, smiling after running through someone. Um, Did say with two crook shoulders as well. I saw yeah. a, a photo of him in hospital. Yeah, yeah. Um, the sort of cunning and skill of a Jake Melksham. Mm. You know, I love the way Hibbert plays off back. Neville Jetta. I mean, you go through. Yeah, how long have we got? Mm. Um, just love that, and then just love the. Um, camaraderie now that Goody and the group have, have obviously built and um, how hard they've worked and, and the way they go about it. So the trade period which is just completed is a chance to really really mm. build a little bit further and yeah. coming in are, are some really solid players. Uh, two arrivals from the Gold Coast Suns in Stephen May and Cade Collard Um I got that out correctly, K K K which is I don't ask me to spell it just yet. Give me a few more months. Um, and big Braden Proust as well. Yeah. The trade period's a tough time in many respects, but it's also an opportunity for this football club. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, I do. Um, another good example, Clint, of you know, the quality people. Um, I, I really just got absolute faith in what they do. And, and I think the hard thing is when you're not as close to it, we've all got an opinion, but, but these guys really know mm. their stuff. Um, I think it was a good period for us. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm really sorry to see, you know, Jesse Hogan go, Dom Tyson, um, Dean Kent, um, all been terrific servants of the footy club. Um, but they've all got other opportunities. You know, I feel for the guys that have been um, delisted. I can personally mm. relate to that. Um, but, um, yeah, it's a pretty um, ruthless, brutal period in, 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 in a sense. But... We have one of the things we've done over the last five years is continually on and off the field <coughs> try to get better and better mm. every day and make hard decisions um, and, but go about it in a professional and in, in, in the right way and I just think I've got full credit again I think they've um, they've done it I was very proud to hear other clubs talking about how professional Melbourne was to deal with um, I had certain things in my mind I would have loved to have been saying or doing at the time, but our guys were just so professional in the way. You're a, you're a lawyer. You're very fair. Yeah, no, yeah. And I studied with Peter Bell um, <laughs> many years ago in, in person. I know Bally reasonably well. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the arts and negotiation, but the, you, you can do you can go about it mm. in a very professional, 
ethical way and, and that's what I love about the way, you know, Josh Marnie and those guys do their business. He's and, terrific, isn't he? Well, he is. And, and when you've got other clubs acknowledging the way Melbourne have handled it, I mean, that speaks volumes in itself. The oh, yes. Stephen May chose yeah. our club and had a number of clubs chasing him mm-hmm. was something that, again, five years ago, that, you know, and, and, and Josh would say, um, Todd, these guys, managers weren't mm-hmm. necessarily... Um, returning our calls and we set out to change things so that we would become a destination club i think you know bernie vince coming here was a big step probably That's a great example isn't it yeah, yeah probably jordan lewis and and i sent an email at the time which i rarely do to the whole club i felt there was a line in the sand moment where we had truly become a destination club when you had somebody of the caliber of a jordan lewis mm. and, and it just absolutely reinforced with jake lever last year and then Stephen may this year and i think we're really really well set set up for for now and the years to come financially the club is in a sound position the agm well is in a few weeks yep. what will you be going to the ag agm with what news on the financial front you know as i think in terms of um sponsorship you know profitability um we're in a stronger position as we've we've ever been um to make the decision I would emphasise this to exit gaming was another watershed type moment for our club because we had personally I'd have loved to have exited gaming uh, day one Mm. as chairman financially there was no way in the wide world we were dependent on it Um, we've managed to turn things around to the point and we did two and a half years work a lot of credit goes to our CFA David Chippendall in terms of financial modelling and the work that went in Um, two and a half years work on a strategy to exit gaming and then to execute on that. Mm. So to be able to um, sell Lee Oak um, for reportedly, um, I say reportedly, um, you know, close to $11 million um, and to be able to make that decision not to renew the licences, the entitlements at Bentley Club um, was a big decision that a lot of work went into over, as I said, two to three year period. Um, and I believe we make good decisions. Good things come from good decisions. Mm. Um, we're in discussions now for another a different stadium deal here, which will be in a much improved deal uh, for us, we hope, in 2019 and beyond. So the club's in great shape financially in terms of our asset base, profitability, you know, football program, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we'll report on that. Um, and we also, ho- you know, hopefully we'll be able to provide an update on um, our facilities project, which again has been two and a half years' work. Which, which, is, which is my next question. I mean, when yeah. you look big picture, Melbourne Football Club needs a permanent home. Yeah. There's been mooted, um, plans mooted for, for the potential of um, jo- above the Jollymont rail yards, uh, potentially at, at Gosh's paddock. Are these all still very live options? Well, well what really... Over a two and a half year period, we've had consultants starting out um, identify every piece of land in Melbourne. Mm. It's something that has to be addressed as a, as a club. We, we want to set this club up for the next um, 30, 50, 100 years um, in what we do here. So we've gone through every piece of land in, in Melbourne, had concept plans drawn up for, from Fisherman's Bend around Gosh's Paddock um, and um, really significant plans now concept plans drawn up for um, Jollymont, uh, as you say, rail yards um, with an oval on Yarra Park and, and really bringing the old East Melbourne cricket ground back to life mm. within Yarra Park with 14 ovals short in the precinct. Um, there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes. There's a lot of uh, work to be done still. Um, I'm you know, reasonably confident um, as chairman, that it's something that's virtually our number one priority now and something we will address. Mm-hmm. Um, where that will finally land, as soon as I can say something more concrete, I will. Um, but members and supporters can be rest assured that there is a lot of work going into um, this project. Uh, our home, we've been at the MCG for 160 years. Um, to be in this precinct is, you know, I think really important if we can deliver that. Um, but it's not easy. It's not an easy exercise, but we're devoting a lot of resources into it. A few final ones, if I can. Um, walking away from Optus Stadium, there would have been the obvious disappointment, but is and, it obvious? And, and abuse for yeah. me personally. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I did as well. I think, I, look, I think the, 
I think the first thing, um, and probably my history and size, yeah. and size doesn't help. Um, <laughs> yeah, you do stick out, don't you? <laughs> yeah. But but most um, look most West Coast um, most West Coast supporters are actually really good. Yeah, they are. And said, you know, some of them said, you know, Glenn, well done in the season. No, you're disappointed. Um, most were pretty good, but you know, you do get the odd. I copped a few. As yeah, well. you get the odd supporter, and um, as I say, I'm pretty focused. Um, uh, my fantastic fiance Victoria will normally respond, though. Um, <laughs> um, been, of Greek, been of Greek heritage, she yeah. won't really cop you know, <laughs> too much there from her man copying any flax. That's always a bit entertaining. What um, I think she pointed out to uh, one of the supporters, he was actually born in WA and Collie, and their retort was, "Well, that explains the problem." <laughs> so, if you're from Perth, you might, have, you know, Collie's a coal mining town. It's not something you necessarily uh, advertise that you're born in Collie, you know. So, so you, you, you're walking out of the stadium, a little bit of abuse here and there. Yeah. Um, are you walking out a, a proud man? Um, over the whole journey, yeah, absolutely. I was look, I was bitterly disappointed, um, uh, particularly with the first first quarter. You can mm. say the first half, but I, I thought the first quarter, um, as I know, our players and coaches were were devastated afterwards. Um, but then when the dust settled, obviously really proud of the progress. Um, one thing about this group, they're such competitors. Um, you know, learning from that uh, and then building, understanding that, look, we were one step away mm. from a grand final, but we were still along. We, we played the ultimate premiers, obviously, uh, on their home deck. Um, having beaten them four weeks earlier there, which doesn't necessarily help you when you go back and play a team in, in finals. But I, but I think there was a lot of learning about our group and our team. Um, I think I also reflected really proud because I'd sort of felt for probably eight to 12 weeks, I'd felt like we're almost playing a final every week mm. to get to where we wanted to get and where we should have been. And in fairness, that probably caught up. Um, you want to finish top four. West Coast had the week's break, you know, can study their opponents and, you know, attack that game fresh one way, one on, on their home deck. So... That, that, that was probably the thing, but really proud of um, getting to the finals. But not just we didn't just make up the numbers. We were a serious threat. Oh, absolutely. I, I know in Perth, a lot of my old friends and people that did text me, they were incredibly worried mm. about that game. They were very relieved to get through. Mm. They actually, uh, anyway, that's, it was disappointing. Do, do you get a chance to, to chat to the players, you know, the, the senior leaders of the of the Melbourne Footy Club. Oh, I, yeah, from time to time. Mm. You know, it's it's not. Um, it's certainly. I know it's not. It's, it's a, not it's, part of my no. role to you know to. But but if you you know post a result like that, you know what what message have you got for them? The the, the players, both senior and and those inexperienced types. Well, I I, I think the the. Um, the message, you know, and I know from myself and the board, really proud of the efforts over the whole year, and certainly, um, you know, that the last game didn't define our whole year and the growth and progress and overcoming the the, the challenges. Um, but you really won, you know, it was so exciting what we'd experienced here. Yeah. You know, um, we really want to experience more of it as a club, and. The other side was the West Coast game where it really stings when yeah. you cop a result like that in a final. So to learn from that, you don't really want to feel that again. You know, you really want to um, work harder again and just keep doing what to keep working harder, you know, ignore the noise, whether it's too good or too bad, and just keep focusing on what we need to do as a club. Um, and we, we'll get there. And we'll get there as a group, as a whole club. And does that extend to the supporters? I mean, this is a great opportunity to, to leave them in 2018 with a... A message that resonates right through the the preseason. I yeah, mean. look, I, I would just say get right behind this group. Um, they are working so hard. The way they play, um, they've really captured the hearts of the AFL world, and you should be really proud as a supporter group. You know, focus really on the positives about what this group have done and what they're going to do. You know, and get right behind them. That energy was really important here um, in the finals. I think the players, to their credit. Ninety thousand, but they really embrace that. They really embraced it, and embraced that energy behind them. Uh, and you should be really, really proud. And one thing about this group, a lot of character, mm. um, and I'm very confident they will, you know, respond as a group and work really hard. And I can't wait for 2019 to start. 
nor can I. <laughs> Congratulations to you, to your, to your board on, on the achievements in 2018. But as we've mentioned already, the, um, the hard work in many respects has only just begun. That's right. No, it's not the end. It's just the beginning. Thanks, uh, thanks Clint. Thanks for your time. No, thank you. And thanks to our special friends at Zurich for, yeah, for, sponsoring, yeah. for sponsoring this podcast right through the year. Yeah, absolutely. Look, to Tim Bailey and the whole team there, they have been unbelievable. And um, look, I think that, that's what makes it special as well, to see the smiles on their face, our sponsors, all of our partners, our supporters through the final series. That, that's what we're about and um, that's what we want to deliver as a football club. It's been a pleasure. President, thank you so much. Thanks. Glenn Bartlett there on our final episode of Inside Melbourne for 2018. We'll be back bigger and better in 2019. Watch this space.